Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shinx and today once again on the legendary map Anorian we are going to cast a 2v2 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1. On the bottom left side of the map we have the blue Mordor player I Love Lisa, his ally at the top left side is the orange Mordor player Bobs, they are against the green Isengard player Jekyll and his ally at the top right side is the red Gondor player Stevie. Gondor, Isengard against Double Mordor which is for sure a quite tough matchup for the Double Mordor team just because the combination of Gondor and Isengard in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is just insanely strong. Looks like Mordor is planning to creep the troll uh, Warg layer, sorry, with the help of Gollum. The Gollum is gonna be used to lure the Wargs away from the lair. In this way, with the Eye of Sauron, they will be easily able to creep that. And not only that, of course, after creeping this, the Orc unit are gonna hit level 3, which gives you the chance to get one Orc Archer on the field, combine them with the Orcs, Get a level 3 combo battalion, which is going to be quite helpful when it comes to defend yourself against the first push. Soldiers, they are fighting against the Gollum. Gollum is extremely tanky against soldiers and also faster, which can be good for harassment. And at the same time, Isengard player Stevie is of course able to destroy the Lumber Mill from I Love Lisa at the bottom left side. Ah, a new horde of all. This mortar player is also building furnaces inside the base, which are simply much much tankier than the slaughterhouses. However, the mortar player who wants to get some trolls on the field has to build slaughterhouses instead, just because of the food bonus. And remember, in BFME 1, food bonus is going to make your monsters like Mumai kills and trolls, drummer trolls also, much much cheaper. So yeah, mortar was able to buy enough time. There is one more Urukai coming from the Uruk pit. As Isengard starting with the Uruk pit, which is a questionable move. I would like to start with two furnaces instead, just to get to the power spike of Isengard by building armory and getting some stronger units on the field a bit faster. War chant for the first time is going to be used on the soldiers and on the Urukai at the same time. Now the soldiers are going to be extremely tanky. They will be 50% tankier and they will also be dealing 50% more damage, which means those Oryx, they don't stand a chance. At the very same time, this Mordor is trying to defend his ally's mill with the level 3 Orc, almost level 4, and he should be definitely combining this with an Orc Archer Battalion, but I believe he cannot afford that since the Orc Archers, they cost 300, while the Oryx are for free. And of course, Oryx level 3 level advantage in BFME 1 is just massive. This mill is going to be taken down right after. This Isengard is also building one slaughterhouse, two furnaces right after inside the base. Once again, the main reason for that is simple, because furnaces, they have double the HP. A slaughterhouse has only 1500, and a furnace level 1 has 3000. Very, very simple to understand. At the very same time, the Gondor player is building one blacksmith, two farms inside the base into the stable right after, which is of course needed. You will need those mobile units on the field just to be able to pressure your opponent as soon as possible. Because in, regardless what the matchup is, in no situation you don't want to give uh, you want to give Mordor the chance to scale into the mid to late game. Mordor is like a you know like power level over 9,000 in the very late game with three flying heroes on the field with a massive troll army and catapult to back them up against the combos of Isengard. So Mordor is gonna shine bright like a diamond, even though Isengard is a perfect counter to that. Remember Isengard's freezing rain from the spellbook is able to nullify all the leadership bonuses from the Mordor team, which is of course the hardest counter ever. Since Mordor is not able to buy any upgrades like Forge Blades or Heavy Armor on any of the units, it's like a massive leadership relying faction in Battle for Middle Earth 1. So, of course the Mordor player will be now able to defend himself. The soldiers, they will still be able to get a couple of orcs, but not many of them are remaining on the field anymore. With the help of the golem, should be easy, lemon squeezy. And also, he will be able to kill potentially the mill. Even if he was not able to kill it, he was definitely able to kill some workers, which is, you know, better than nothing. The first Gondorite is on the field. He's riding now to destroy some more mills. And the economy from the blue model player I Love Lisa is not looking very good. Stevie is asking his ally for the war chant, which is going to be used now. Beautiful trample into the level 5 Orc Archer, but Tainted Land is able to nullify enemy leadership bonuses into the Eye of Sauron. Now they have armor and leadership from the... Oh, heal is going to be used, don't underestimate them. That's what I'm saying, you know. Leadership bonuses are crazy in this game. Tainted Land doesn't only give you armor bonus, but also nullifies enemy leadership bonuses they get from the war chant from his ally, the Isengard player. 
They will be using heal and just focusing down the meals instead, which is the right call. Meals are generating a lot of resources and you want to destroy them as soon as you potentially can. This mother player is actually trying to rush for a Nazgul, which is... Ah, I don't know about that. I believe you will need trolls on the field in this matchup against Isengard, even though this Isengard's economy is not looking that great once again, because he was building up the Uruk pit. And that's the reason, ladies and gentlemen, why I don't like to build a Uruk pit early on inside my base in a 2v2 match. Just because you can always ask your ally for an additional Gondonite who can be used to defend your mills against the Orcs. Orcs are extremely squishy, and one Gondonite is going to be able to kill like 100 of Orcs all alone. And you can just build up a huge eco with a bunch of furnaces inside your base and rush the armory as soon as possible to be able to attack the Mordor before he is ready to defend himself. Like, what, what Mordor needs to defend himself are four trolls at least and one single drama ah. troll. That's the minimum requirements if you want to be able to survive the first push with the combos of Isengard. Gondor is creeping now the trolley at the bottom right side by luring the troll away with one of the Gondor Knights and, you know, using the second Gondor Knight to kill the Lair, which is pretty efficient. This Mordor, let me check his money. Um, this, by the way, is Bob's. He has around 1,500 resources collected. 5,000 is required, of course, to be able to get a Nazgul on the field. Nazgul is not a terrible choice, especially not against Gondor Knights. With the Nazgul's help, you should be able to keep your mills a little bit longer protected. But again, it's a long way to go. He needs more than 3,000 resources for that. This Mordor is saving for the Troll Cage and he has finally the money. And once again, luckily this Isengard is not, is, is not rich either, you know what I'm saying? He needs to build the armory, has to buy Forge, not Forge Blades, but Heavy Armor, Fire Arrow and Banner before he's ready to go. And this level 5 is going to be hard to be taken down. Unless Gondor is going to be able to buy Heavy Armor on his Gondor Knights. But of course, the orc damage you can see yourself against the farms is kind of questionable. One orc is going to need ages to take them down, which kind of makes sense because orcs at the end of the day are for free. Power point wise, we need industry as soon as possible. I love Lisa is actually quite close for that. A quarter power point is needed to get the industry unlocked, which is a huge uh, power spike for the evil factions like Isengard and Mordor. Olum is scouting this area just to get vision. Two trolls are chasing down the Gondor Knights. The Gondor Citadel is the only Citadel in the, entire, in the entire game that is able to shoot. Be careful with the Gondor Knights, I'm telling you. Okay, one of them has been taken down. The second one is going to be taken on as well. Great micro here from the Gondor plan, but he has no well inside the base, which is kind of questionable. I'm assuming that yeah, this Gondor player is definitely rushing Gandalf, boys. He's not getting any upgrades on the field. He want to get the money as soon as possible because the power points are already unlocked for Gandalf the Wind. And with Gandalf's help, the Nazgul is not going to be that impactful anymore. Because if you don't know, the Easter Light from Gandalf the Wind and the Warning Arrow from Faramir, the captain of Gondor, is more than enough to burst down a Nazgul from 100 to 0. And this Mordor should be also really close for the, Balrog, uh, for the Nazgul. At this point, maybe... You should be trying to get the Witch King on the field instead. Not only the Witch King is of course much much tankier than a Nazgul, but also provides you with additional damage and armor leadership, which can be extremely effective on the trolls from your ally. Industry has been used. Because let me tell you that much, the Nazgul, when Gandalf is on the field, is not going to be that effect impactful anymore. Crossbowmen on the field for the defense. Armory is up on the field for... Yeah, he has no money. <laughs> That's the problem. Is he actually trying to save for the Saruman? No, he isn't. He has no money. He's broke. He has to make units, of course. The Uruks, they cost 200. Crossbowmen, they cost 400. So one combination all alone is going to cost you 600. Then you need to also upgrade them with heavy armor for another um, 480. And also the fire for 600. Just imagine how expensive a combo battalion from Isengard faction is. And he needs to also go for the industry, but I'm assuming he's trying to save for the Tainted Lands, which is not a major mistake, because that's going to give you the chance to counter and cover the enemy Tainted Lands, but I think at this stage of the game, Isengard should be definitely trying to go for the industry earlier. Because in this matchup, you need Freezing Rain, and the fastest way to get there is getting Warchant, Industry, and then 6 power points afterwards, 
to unlock the freezing rain from this spellbook. Orcs and Berserkers are also required, by the way, just to be able to deal with this Orcs, and that's a miscommunication. In this Gondor player should be just getting one more Gondor Knight on the field, sending those Gondor Knights just around this area and guarding this, pro you know, guarding this mill from his ally. The one Gondor Knight is going to be able to kill like countless of Orcs. Two power points collected. Well, well, well. I mean, they are not putting pressure on Mordor anymore. That's a bad thing. And here's now a Nazgul on the field. Um, again, I don't agree with the Nazgul choice. I think he should be saving up for the Witch King. But of course, the Mordor player isn't able to see, but we are able to see. So he doesn't know uh, that he has the time actually to be able to get for them to go for the Witch King. You also need to keep in mind that Witch King costs you 3,000 more resources in compared to a Nazgul. Berserker will be used for harassment. Also great when it comes to take, take down enemy Lumber Mills, by the way. But as long as Gandalf is nearby, it's hard. Is he actually trying to go for it? Yeah. Oh, but he was actually smart by dodging and stopping the Nazgul to not get hit by the Lightning Sword from Gandalf the Grey. Or Gandalf the Red, sorry. Gondor Knights level 7. Easter Light is going to be used. That's going to burst him, but not one-shot him. Again, the combination of the Warning Arrow is needed. You will never be able to one-shot a Nazgul with the Lightning Sword all alone. But the Lightning... Uh, not, sorry. The Lightning Sword is able to kill him. When you hit the Nazgul with the Lightning Sword and only the Nazgul all alone, you will be able to kill him from 100 to 0. But Easter Light is not able to do the same. Orcs all day long. This Mordor is now having a Troll Cage level 2 and building now the second Troll Cage right after. So he wants to recruit a army worthy of Mordor. That's the plan of Mordor for sure. And I believe this Mordor in, on the other side is trying to save now for the Witch King. With the Nazgul being on the field and the spells from Gandalf being on cooldown, I believe they should be also able to keep those mills long enough protected to get to the point in which you can recruit the leader of the Nine, the Witch King himself. This Isengard has no damage leadership and that's the only downside of this matchup between of this group between Gondor and Isengard. Rohan, for example, can simply recruit Theodin, give Theodin to your combos, so this way you have like always 50% more damage and 50% more armor, which again is able to stack with the Warchant from your spellbook for 100% damage and 100% armor. Now, since he's like playing with Gondor, the only leadership Gandalf provides is combat experience and armor, but against Trolls and Nazgûls and Witch King, you will need damage leadership. And Gondor can't provide that. For that, he has to recruit Boromir and get him to level 4, which is easier said than done. They have now three combos with Fire Arrow, but they have not the heavy armor just yet. Again, that's a huge investment, by the way. And Isengard is broke, as you can see and tell. The Nazgul is around this area, helping his ally out, but he has to be careful. Overcommitting might end quite bad. And the level 5 combo we had from the beginning of the game is actually still alive. I like that. Mordor definitely needs a second drama troll. Not only for the worst case scenario in which you might lose your only drama troll. And this way you lose a big chunk of your leadership. But also because the drama trolls are able to support each other by giving each other 50% increased armor. And now we have also Farami on the field. That means the Nazgul will get one-shotted. Is there a light? Oh, but Farami has to get mounted. Farami, 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 the captain of Gondor. Oh, he's slow a bit when he's trying to get mounted. Actually, these trolls were throwing rocks on his own trolls to knock them down on the ground. Look how many trolls we have now on the field. We see one, two, three, four, five, six trolls. Seven trolls and a drama troll and a level, and a level five combo. Okay, the warning arrow was not able to get off. Farami is getting mounted and that's going to be a fiesta fight. Trust me, no one. The one of the trolls has been taken down. Now you gotta engage. You need to engage now. They are playing a bit too passive in my opinion. Three power points collected for Isengard. He might go for the Tainted Land. That's gonna be also his plan. So now this fight is gonna hit like a truck. Is he waiting for the Witch King? Yes, they are actually still trying to wait for the Witch King. Who is gonna join the battlefield in about 30 seconds. But in those 30 seconds, they might lose a lot. They have still the Drama Troll in the Eye of Sauron from the Spellbook for 100% damage. And... 100% combat experience and 50% armor. But with the Witch King, they will make sure that this attack is going to be defended in no time. And also, since Warchan has been used already, 
the longer they wait, the, long, the better the chances are that the war chain is going to fall off. This way, Isengard is losing the only damage leadership they got, and their DPS against the trolls is not going to be high enough to burst them down fast enough. Guns of the White is almost level 7. Level 10, of course, unlocks the War of Power. Witch King is here, and the charge is incoming, boys. Go ham. Tainted Land will be used. Isengard is going to cover this Tainted Land immediately to maintain his leadership bonuses, but they have only the War Chant. The Nazgul is on the hand against the Gondor Knights. The trolls are getting lightning strike, but they have so much leadership, they simply don't care. Drama troll is to stay, of course, always closer. Level 10 Gondor Knights, but what can they do against such a reckless hate? One arrow has been used on the Witch King. No, no, the Witch King is still good to go. The Faramir is actually... What is Faramir doing? <laughs> Faramir is desperately trying to show his quality every single game, by the way. They have a level 6 troll, level 2 troll, and level 4 troll. A couple of them has, have been taken down, but it's worth it. Isengard lost everything. And he also needs Lourdes, guys. Now, you might call me crazy, and you might say, Shanks, what is good? What is Lourdes good for? You are facing against mighty creatures like those mountain trolls. What can Lourdes do against that? Nothing. <laughs> but that's not his main purpose. Him putting, you know, when you put him near to the combos, there is a chance that he will be passively gaining some levels. And once he's level 5, it means 60% more damage leadership. And I was explaining to you now, for, a, for many, many times, for a long time actually in this video, that damage leadership is the key to victory when it comes to burst down those trolls. If you can't burst them, they will burst you. They don't care about your armor leadership. They will deal crazy amount of damage regardless how much armor leadership you have. Even if Gandalf is nearby, your combos are gonna be still one-shotted. Gondor was able to buy the... No, that's actually Mordo who was buying the middle camp. Bobs. What is he trying to do? Archie range now. And Faramir, of course, is getting revived. Gondor has actually a decent amount of money. Maybe Boromir could be a nice choice. Not only Boromir leadership, of course, but also Boromir's passive, which is knocking down the enemy units. In this case, the enemy trolls. And this way, you don't kill them, but you disable them. Nazgul is trying to fly around the circles. This way, you can actually dodge the Easter light forever. Look, Gandalf can cast it. Yeah, we are now getting some crossbow man. Gandalf has to cancel it. He will be seeing the trolls coming. Oh! Oh my goodness. Don't, 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 don't. He's gonna die, he's gonna die. I'm telling you that much. The shield bubble, though, he has been used. The charge is incoming now. The Nazgul is diving in. The Easter light can be now used. Smart move from Gandalf here. He was actually baiting them big time. The Nazgul is like one shotable. But Isengard has to focus him down. The Nazgul has been taken down, but the trolls are also falling down one by one. Do we have actually a level 7 troll? No, no, no. Hey, by the way, the good thing about combat experience from Gandalf is it provides you with 200 person combat experience. And dude, like, if you kill like Oryx, you will level up to level 10 in no time. 200 person combat experience is kind of nuts. And also Saruman is gonna give you 100 person combat experience. It means 300 person combat experience when those two wizards are nearby. And that means kill one sentry tower and get level 6. Kill two, get level 10. Just like that. Witch King. Yes, he's the light on cooldown, but he has the lightning sword. He might be in trouble. Isengard is sending his units to his allies' base. I don't like this positioning of the well at all. They need to walk all the way deep inside the base. That's why the well placement has to be around this side or this side. The longer you travel, the more time you lose. And time lo losing time in RTS games is a no-go. But I'm almost level 4. Level 5 is going to unlock his own leadership. Which is again armor, and armor doesn't help at all in those kind of situations. Maybe Isengard should be trying to get for uh, to look to see for Saruman, but of course uh, he can't afford that because he has to make more, he has to recruit more and more units, upgrade every single one of them with fire arrow for 600, heavy armor for 480, and the units for 600 all alone. It's like yeah, almost 2,000 resources you need to invest to get the upgrades you need with banner, heavy armor, fire arrow. Uruks and Crossbowmen is a pretty, pretty costly and expensive fun for Isengard faction. Now he has a couple of archers. It's going to be enough to keep the Witch King away from now. Uh, Mordor on the other side is actually getting more and more, Nazgul, uh, more and more trolls on the field from the double troll cage. And we have also now double siege wards coming up for the orange Mordor player on the other side. Bobs, which is kind of good because that's going to be your best count and best bet when it comes to deal with Isengard combos in in long terms. Because once again, trolls are 
shining bright like a diamond for now, but freezing rain is gonna shut them down completely. And Isengard is actually getting closer. Darkness. Use darkness. He's not using darkness. Darkness is available. There we go, finally. That means even more damage and more armor for the trolls. Dude, they don't care about it. Look far at me. I get one shot, literally. Combos. Bitch King has to be careful. This troll is gonna be in the suicide mission. Steve is asking his ally to kill this troll now. Jekyll is actually being hunted. Boom. And they have no leadership, right? This drama troll has no Witch King. He had no Witch King leadership. Hey, Witch King. Talking about Witch King. He might be dead. He might be dead. Easter Light is available, by the way, from Gandalf. Witch King, fly now. Fly, 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 fly. I think he's not going to be dead. Like, he's still having a lot of HP. Like, the Easter Light is dealing around 60% HP damage from the Witch King. So, definitely way less in compared to in Nazgul. And... Isengard, Gondor, they are in a, in a bad spot because the more time they will now give to Mordor, the more catapults he will be able to get. And the more catapults, the more painful for the Gondor Isengard team, let me tell you that much. Alright, oh my goodness man, we got ourselves a game. Mordor in late game, boys. Mordor is a monster in late game, I'm telling you. More trolls, but again, I'm scared because freezing rain now. Oof, that's gonna be kind of the biggest counter, the hardest counter. Look how tanky the troll is. Do you see that? How long they are shooting him for? But uh, now, that's, now it's a different story. Now it's a different story. I mean, they are still dealing a lot of damage against combos. Oh, nice. Zaplas from Gandalf. He's level 8 now. Orcs are on the hand. Orcs are also dealing a lot of damage, by the way, to the rangers. Rangers are kind of squishy against anything. Especially against catapults. Oh my goodness. Nice shot. A fine hit. It's kill, kill, kill. Oh, never mind. Easter Light will be used on the on the Witch King. No more trolls nearby, by the way, but it's fine. I believe the Witch King is going to be able to get in safety. And, of course, beautiful shot. Of course, Isengard. Oh, Lightning Sword is going to be able to hit it. Nope, that's not going to be the case. Of course, the Isengard, the team, they are now forced to go back to the base to heal up over time. And, of course, that's going to favor the double model team. Why? Because Freezing Rain has been used already. And it's active now for three minutes. After the three minutes, all the leadership is gonna come back to the double murder team. And they will have also more catapults inside the middle with two siege wargs being up on the field. And but also Bobs needs to do is get even a third siege ward from your main base. Just to spam catapults. Now that sounds lame, but trust me on that one, that's like the only possible way Mordo Mordo can win against Gondor in Isengard. Two power points collected after the freezing rain. Gondor, I'm assuming he's trying to go for the cloud break. Because he cannot go for the eagles from the Gandalf divide all alone. You need to pick the elves before you can do that. Cloud break is not horrible. That's the fastest way to the army of the dead. Maybe that's his plan. But of course, in those kind of situations, the eagles, I mean, would be just a bit more reliable. And yeah, normally this matchup should be an easy one for the Gondor Isengard team. Let me tell you guys. But this one is far from being over. Isengard's economy is not looking that great. Because he keeps losing stuff. He has to revive stuff all the time. Upgrade them all the time. Now he has a lot of units inside the base from his ally. Of course the combination evil and good is always nice. Because it's going to provide you with the sustain. Which evil factions normally don't get. Marketplace is coming up now for Stevie. The green Gondor player. Uh, the red Gondor player sorry. Gandalf is looking around this area. He's almost level... Eight and a half. And this is one of the matchups in which your War of Power is not going to have a huge impact on the game. Look at this. <laughs> Three Nazgûls are on the hand. But now every furnace inside the base from Isengard is going to act like a tower. Because they are level 3 and they are also extremely tanky. They have 6,500 HP. Which is a lot. And you can see... Getting those blacksmiths from level 1 to level 3 is going to take you ages. In, in, you know, indeed, I think your game has to last like... 40 plus minutes for you to get them to level 3. They have a lot of combos. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 combos. Rangers. But of course, the biggest weakness of the combos, because they are like very immobile, are going to be <laughs> like the catapults from Mordor. It's hard for them to dodge the incoming damage because they can't move fast enough. That's the problem. Huh? Mordor is making a move. We have 4 catapults, 5 catapults on the field. We have a bunch of trolls, drama trolls to support them. Freezing Rain is still on cooldown. One catapult is actually going a little bit too forward. He will be definitely taken down by Gandalf to hide himself. But look this. 
When the katas are gonna shoot him down, it will also deal a lot of damage. And keep in mind that the drummer troll from Mordor is also able to sport the catapult with additional damage leadership, which means you can take down those walls in the gate and also the enemy combos down a bit faster. They are waiting for the cooldown of freezing rain before they can make a move. Darkness is going to be used. Don't let them kill your catapults like that, I'm telling you. Drama Troll has to stay closer to the catapults, though. The wall is going to be broken. Rohirrim summon. What is this, a siege tower? What am I watching, the films? Are we in the Return of the King of the Lord of the Rings? Oh, don't, don't shoot with your catapults. Catapults have friendly fire. That means you are actually able to hit yourself. The wall is going to be broken, but I believe Condor has enough money. No, he has not enough money to repair the wall. And now Mordor is making a move, but Freezing Rain is going to be available very soon. In about 15 seconds, and that's going to turn around everything. I think is, Mordor is engaging now with Saruman the White. Converts the trolls. Fireball! Painted land. Now you can steal them. Steal them now. He was able to steal only one, I believe, right? And that's bad. Now Saruman has to run for his life. Look at the damage from the trolls hitting like an absolute track. Freezing rain is still not available. In about five seconds. Trust me, he's smashing this button now with his keyboard. He's desperately, desperately trying. Kill Saruman. Look, Saruman is so low. Why would you attack the Witch King? Does he have heal from the spellbook? Yeah, he has heal. He's trying to beat. Witch King has to survive. Saruman is gonna be taken down by the Nazgul. Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King. And what are those trolls doing? Did he use freezing rain? The answer is no. He didn't even use what is happened. What happens here? I'm really confused now. How the trolls didn't smash them way, way harder than I was expecting, you know, than actually what happened. Like, I don't know how the Mordor player actually managed to lose this fight. And where are the catapults at? The coordination of the Mordor army was very questionable. Not only they were actually leaving the catapults in an open, on an open field, and, like, pretty much presenting them to Gandalf the White, here, some catapults for you to kill, because trolls were not nearby, and you always want to protect your catapults with your trolls, but also, they kind of messed up this fight a lot. Holy moly. Gandalf is almost level 9. The Witch King luckily was able to survive. Never mind, he got killed. The Witch King got killed. Oh, that's a massive leadership they will lose now. Our point wise, who's closer to the Balrog? I love Lisa. The blue model player is actually really close. He has 9 power points only away. And remember, the Balrog of Morgoth, the Durin Spain, is able to one-shot the entire Gondor castle by himself. More catapults are required. This more there's so much money, I believe, right? Let me check his money. Yeah, look his money. The money you have here at the bottom left that is useless. You want to always invest your resources, especially in late game, always. Like, you want to be broke, if this makes sense for you guys. You want to keep spamming units all the time. You have still a lot of available command points. Just build a third siege works or make cut, make travels yourself. Make Muma kills, make something. But don't waste your money like that. Yes, all the Nazguls, of course. Reviving them is for free. So make use of your money, trust me. He was giving one of his meals to his ally, that's something. But still, when you have this much money, do something about that. And ranges, of course, unlike... Oh, nice shot. But ranges are a bit faster in compared to, compare to the combos. That means they can always move aside when a catapult shot is incoming. He is cancelling the Visa Blast. Freezing Rain is still available, by the way, for the worst case scenario. G Gondor players looking for a chance to get inside the jeans. The Nazgul is on the hand. What is happening? Sauron, I believe, has to get revived. That's going to cost you 2,000 and also a bit of time. And I'm assuming Isengard, Gondor team, they are trying to build a huge army and commit on the middle. And you know what I want to complain about? Um, the... Pro problem actually about the players generally like when anybody on the map Anorian you know decides to capture the middle camp any other opponent player is thrown from that like there are I mean you can just ignore that and go for the enemy main base like there is no need of you going for the middle all the time which is hard to be taken down because it's such a tiny spot and you can place those catapults inside the castle like that inside the camp and they are gonna be hard to be reached so you might lose a lot when it comes to try to take down the middle cam, and you can just ignore that and go for the main castle instead. And this guy has only one single castle, so if you can defeat him, he will be defeated. If you can destroy the castle. 
We have 7 power points collected for Isengard. He's 13 away from the Balrog. We have now really high level combos. One of them is level 9. Rangers, Gandalf, almost level 9. Catapult shots! They have a lot of leadership to Warsh and it's going to be used to make them stronger. This way they can kill these catapults a bit faster. Cutter shots are incoming. Gondor calls for a beautiful shot. Look how much he was able to kill. And Rohan will answer. He will be using the Rohirrim, of course, to kill those catapults. The catapults are being annoying for Isengard. Trust me on that one. Look at this, boys. Look at this. Isengard is falling apart. And yeah, the Nazgul has to use Screech. Use Screech when you see this, when this, when you see this happening. I believe he was using it. I just missed it. A lot of stuff is happening here. The Nazgul is diving in. Catapult shot, uh, shots from left and right. Freezing Rain has been used to make those throws to glass cannons. This way they will get one-shotted. Throws are falling apart. Beautiful Wizard Plus from the White Wizard Saruman. The Nazgul is going to be catch off guard. But I believe this damage is going to be split between him and the archers. That's why he won't be one-shotted. I mean, you need to hit him solo, you know? They have no leadership anymore. Gandalf can go for a Wizard Plus. He has, I believe, also healed from the Spellbook for the worst case scenario. Now, now he has six power points collected, which can be invested into the Giant Eagle Summon from the Gondor Spellbook. Fireball has been used from Saruman to kill one more catapult, and now they have the advantage. Make something happen. But there is one more cutter. Shot incoming. Boom! They are hitting like a truck. Freezing Rain is still active, which means no more leadership for the Mordor team right now as we are talking. For at least two and a half more minutes. But as long as you can save one of, you know, a couple of the units, you can always send them back to the well. And that's the beautiful part about the combination of evil and good. And this way, you're not only going to be able to sustain, but you will be even able to extend your command point limit. I will show you guys what I mean. Right now, the Isengard player has only 178 out of 300. All he got to do is keep making units all the time. And every unit is ca calculated differently, unique, you know? When, for example, a battalion of uh, Uruks, they cost 20, and this costs 30. So one combo is going to cost you 50. But every time you lose some units from the battalion, you will have less and less units around. So if you send them back to the well, you will get a full battalion again. But during this time, you can make more units to simply, you know, extend your command point limit. I have played games in which only 300 command points are possible, but I had like 600 command points in total. As long as you can save a couple of units, that's really easy to accomplish 10 power points collected by Isengard command points are rising he was able to save the level 9 very important like many many times mentioned level advantage is huge and massive in battle for middle of one Saruman level 7 and Lourdes level 5 that's massive by the way Lourdes' leadership is crazy effective much more effective in those kind of situations than the leadership from Saruman or Gandalf Three Nazgûls. Also, this guy had, uh, has to go for some Nazgûls, in my opinion. Just get six of them on the field. Then you can actually use them to kill heroes like Saruman or Ganzov. Six of them are going to deal insane amount of damage. Okay. Smart move from Ganzov. He's... Go now. Go, go, go now. Now you need to make a move. You can't run away now. Because you are slow when you are running away. You are fast when you are engaging. The Witch King is flying by. Getting damaged and bullied. The Easter Light is going to be able to finish him off. And the Witch King is going down. That's again 50% damage and 50% armor leadership. They will lose just like that. Faramir, the captain of Gondor, is... What is what is this role doing? Go, 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 go. Look. What's that? <laughs> Level 6 immediately. Do you see that? Do you see that? That's crazy, my dude. The Lightning Sword is not hurting them at all. But he's distracting them. Because Gandalf is also like a magnet. He's going to draw the attention from the enemy team. And the Giants Eagle are coming. The Eagles are coming, as Peregrine 2 would like to see. Now the commitment on the trolls. And look at that. They don't care about your leadership either. During all this time, the commitment from the Isengard team. I like the positioning a lot. Getting into the backline of the camp. This way you can target the Siege Wargs. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Catapults are still hitting like a truck. We have still three of them. But they are now being focused. The trolls are dying. Remember, Freezing Rain is on cooldown. Uh, it's not active right now. One more catapult and Rohan allies will be summoned once again. How close is Mordor for the Balrog summon? The answer is really close. I love Lisa. The blue Mordor player at the bottom left side is only four power points and a quarter away from the game winning point in which you are summoning the Balrog and destroying the enemy Gondor base. But until then, what is the Siege Wars? What is this troll? I believe this Mordor player is kind of trolling a little bit, you know? He should be going now for a little bit more units, like long time. Look at the Isengard money too. He has now 10,000 plus. 
this model has over 12,000 and he is not investing in uh, microing, macroing his unit slash his economy wisely. Like it's wasted amount of resources he has in the bank. When you have command points available and you have money, then you are doing something wrong. If you have money and command points available, just get some more units. And if you are already maxed out, then just build more production buildings, more troll cages, siege works. But don't save up money when you have nothing to save for. Because, you know, it makes only sense to save when you want to get like a Witch King for 8,000 or a Nazgul for 5,000. But if this has already happened, then there is no need of saving more money. I believe the middle camp is going to be taking down Warchant being used now for more DPS. They will even be able to one-shot those uh, catapults now in no time. Isengard was also doing a phenomenal job, saving all of his combos all the time. 16 power points collected, but holy quackamole, guys, Freezing Rain is still active. But by the way, if you don't know, uh, after you use Freezing Rain, every unit that comes after that will have always leadership. So Freezing Rain is also up, only applying on the current army from your opponent. If he keeps getting more units, those units coming after the Freezing Rain has been used will have no effect from the rain. If this makes sense. So we have Rangers on the field. Um, Gondor is doing a nice job with the Gandalf. He was actually keeping his Gandalf alive all the time. Very important. And is, of course, very impactful hero with the Easter Light, Lightning Sword against Nazgul, Trolls, and everything. He's almost level 10 as well. But once again, the War of Power against Trolls is not very effective, but you might still knock them down, knock them back to disable them, crowd control them, if this makes sense. Level 10 combos, by the way. Just Gondo should be buying the middle camp, knowing the fact that uh, Mordor might be really close for the Balrog power point. And when you buy the middle camp, you will be absolutely good to go. Because even if you lose your Gondor castle after that, you will still not be defeated. Yes, now finally some more Siege Warwicks, but you need to make this move a little bit earlier. When you lose everything, it's a little bit too late already, you know? You always, I like to have always like a plan B, just for the worst case scenario. If my attack is not going to be successful, I want to have always like a backup plan, you know? Because the worst thing that can happen to you is if you go for an attack and the attack will be defended from your opponent and he's coming for a counter attack and you have nothing else left on the field anymore. This way, I mean, with that, always keep producing more, 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 especially with evil factions like Isengard and Mordor. That's the key, boys. That's the key. Now he has only one single catapult. If he would make this move like two minutes earlier, he would have like six catapults now on the field. Witch King, please be careful. He lost him twice already. And Witch King, yeah, you can revive him for free, but... Oh my goodness, hitting like a track. But it, he has a, like a really long revive time. Freezing Rain is not active anymore, I believe. That's why, cut, why the trolls are hitting like an absolute track. Lord is running for his life. Gondor is saving for the money. Yeah, he has now the money for the middle camp. We are really close for the Balrog summon, but it's not close enough. The Gandalf is there. Don't risk. Don't play with your Witch King. Always be extremely careful with him. Looks like they want to commit on the middle camp. Trolls are a bit faster than Dramar Trolls. So you need to be smart and careful about that. And Mordor has to make a move when the Freezing Rain is on cooldown. That's the only possible way. Witch King, at least get, get closer. Slap! Dramar Trolls are not nearby yet, guys. That's a massive leadership they are missing. Tainted Land that. Tainted Land. Oh my goodness, they are hitting so extremely hard, those trolls. The power points are going to rise to the sky too. He has the Balrog Summon, by the way, now, guys. He has the Balrog Summon. But this is the other motor player, Bobs. He's also really close for the Balrog Summon. Gondor is going for a counter with the Rohan allies. He's trying to destroy the Siege Warriors. If they can destroy the camp at the castle... Uh, try again. The camp, yeah, in the middle of the map. The Balrog will be able to one-shot that. Balrog will be special summon now from the Spellbook. But don't be chill. Don't chill, Balrog. Balrog... Can you please wake up? Hey! Drin drin. Who's on the phone? Not Balrog, because he's just having a break, I guess. He's on vacation. Um, Alright, so the Balrog is very, 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 very... He's paying attention around this side, maybe, but Balrog is, you know, is always your priority. You wanna, you wanna pay attention about your... What is this, bro? What is this, bro? I'm very, very confused now. This Balrog is, like, doing nothing here. Why? You could be taking down the castle already with the Balrog. Open the doors to the great siege work. I'm really lost right now, boys. I don't know what to see. I seriously don't know what to see. The Balrog did absolutely... He's like... 
like a statue or something. But look at the bad boy boys. Look at them. Look at the wings. Look at the flaming sword. Look at the design. And for a really old video game like Battle for Middle Earth 1A's, I'm still impressed by the amazing graphics and details. Balrog did his job, Kappa. I mean, there was the wars by far, and that's like the worst, you know? You can't top this anymore. I mean, that's the bright side about the story. We have seen the worst. Everything from now is gonna be better. <laughs> he played such a good game early game, but he messed up big time late game. Like, the last thing you want to do is be grouped with all your trolls. What you want to do is group them differently. Give them numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, for example. And then you send them in manually by not clicking one combo, by splitting your trolls to attack different targets all the time. Because what is going to happen eventually is if you group all your trolls and click one combo, they're going to be clumped up. So if one of them dies, there is a high chance that he's going to rage and he's going to knock down all your allied trolls on the ground which is gonna give your opponent the chance to kill them. So what you wanna do is you wanna group them, one, two, three, four, five, for example, and then select manually for each troll is different target. That's what you wanna do. Level five crossbowmen are gonna, is gonna be taken down. Eagle summon. Hey, thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel, by the way, appreciate that. By the way, guys, quick information, we are also streaming on Twitch uh, for more Battle for Middle Earth content. In the live stream, I would love to get to know you. So please do me a favor. Go in the description, in the video description down below. Find my Twitch channel, click on it, and click on follow. That's it. Gonna cost you no nothing but five seconds of your time. All right, the game is now in a, in a slow progress, of course. Um, I think Mordor is kind of... I don't know. Also, the second Balrog got taken down. Isengard was also... I think the Balrog is backed or something. I don't know what's going on. I see you... Lourdes is on the fields now. Let's skip a bit forward. Let's see what they're gonna do. Freezing Rain has been used now for the next time. War chant. And looks like they wanna go inside the base of the orange mortal player. I believe the replay is kinda backed. I believe the replay is kinda backed. Yeah, the replay is backed, boys. That's what happened. Oh, that's so bad, though. What is happening here? Is the replay so backed? I think that what happened. Ah, I was actually blaming the model player for no reason. That happened ne never before to me, by the way. That the replay was bugged like this. I cannot believe that. Is this gonna be fixed automatically? Or is it gonna be bugged for permanently? It's bugged, dude. Oh, Stevie has been defeated. The Gondor player has been defeated. I don't know what's going on. Why is this replay so bugged? What the heck is this? No way. <laughs> it was phenomenal all the time. Mordor power make the, made the game bugged. I love Lisa has been defeated. Now it's a 1v1 situation. Guys, I'm so sorry that we missed the end of the of this game. I don't know who won. Uh, but if the Balrog summon, the first Balrog summon was actually successful. And I thought he's not moving because he was too lazy. But I believe the game got bugged. And that's the first time I see that. Never happened to me before, by the way. I don't know what's going on right now. And I'm gonna upload this replay still. I believe it was a nice game that can show you that also a bad matchup like Double Mortal can actually prove themselves worthy. And if they would be playing a little, little bit better in the mid to late game, they would have won this game much, much easier, in my opinion. They had such a big upper hand, but the organization of the army, the micro of the units was kinda not on point, really. And I believe that's the main reason why the game lasted that long at the first place. After getting the middle, getting some catapults on the field, they had to make a move. In this matchup, very important if you are able to survive the freezing rain from Isengard. The second you get your leadership back, you gotta make a move. That's how this matchup works against Isengard. If you just wait and be patient, then he will just wait also for the next freezing rain and all your leadership bonuses are gonna be kinda non, you know, worthless anyways guys i hope you still enjoyed this game if you did please don't forget to leave a like on this video subscribe for more content like this in the future i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a track and as always stay beyond sunrise peace out